So if you're in the area, we'd love to have you at church this morning. It's good to have all of you uh, at church. Thank God for his goodness. I'm y'all glad he's merciful. I'm y'all glad he's patient. I'm y'all glad he's kind. I'm y'all glad he's patient while being kind. <laughs> I mean, y'all know sometimes it's hard to be both at the same time. Sometimes it's hard to be patient and kind at the same time, right? But thank God he's patient and kind, and uh, praise God. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. Hey, just give you a little bit of an update, just kind of what's happening with the building right now. We're working with the... Man, thank God for codes. Don't y'all just love codes? All types of fire marshal codes, and this code, and that code, and the Da Vinci code, and all the codes, and just all such a blessing. So uh, we'll get there, you know. Sometimes it takes a little time to do some things, but uh, we send in our water off to be tested. That takes like two weeks, and basically the water well's done. Now we just got to get it tested and certified and all that stuff, and working with the code department for the building and all that type of stuff. So uh, praise the Lord. The wheels of justice turn ever so slow but true. It's kind of like the wheels of construction They turn ever so slow but true in Jesus' name. So we'll get there. Hey, if you've been here the past couple weeks, we've been talking about uh, what made Jesus viral. Viral just means a rapid transfer of information between individuals. All of us remember Gangnam Style. Gangnam Style. We don't know what it means. We don't know anything about it, but it swept the world, didn't it? I mean, everybody, what is Gangnam Style? Who knows? But, you know, it's got billions of views, and, uh, you know, that's, it just went viral, and things go viral every year. Used to, you know, if you got a million clicks, they considered that viral. Now you need five million clicks in order to go viral, and viral is not just how, how many you get, it's how fast it spreads. So we've been looking at the ministry of Jesus. Jesus was... Uh, in ministry only three short years. How many of y'all know three years goes by fast? How many of y'all know when you're that age, uh, time is slow. When you're, when you're a kid, you're always bored. How many of y'all wish you could be bored again? How many of y'all left bored in the rear view mirror a long time ago, right? I mean, uh, if you remember being 12, it's like, I'm bored. And then if you had a dad like I dad, it was like, my dad, it was like, well, I can get you unbored. Uh, go rake the yard, right? Or he would come up things to unboard me. But uh, when you get older, you know, three years, it's just gone. How many of y'all know it's about to be 2024? How many of y'all remember when Prince sang like 1999? How many of y'all know 19, that we're going to party like it's 1999? That's almost 25 years ago, y'all. I mean, 1999, Y2K came and went. We're all still here, y'all. How many of y'all know it's supposed to be the end of the world like 25 years ago? But we're all still here. But the older you get, the faster it goes. And Jesus had really three years of ministry. He was baptized by John the Baptist at age 30. The Holy Spirit descended upon him like a dove. And the Bible says, a voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He was baptized. And then he went from there into the wilderness for 40 days, 40 nights. He didn't eat or drink. He was there in the wilderness so that he could be tempted by the devil. The devil came to him and offered him all different types of things uh, to get him to bow down. And Jesus just defeated him one time after another with the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Then the Bible says the devil left him for a more opportune time. I mean, I know the devil may leave you alone, but he'll be back. So sometimes we get free of certain things, but don't think that he won't try to bring it back around. He's always going to try to bring it back around. Uh, How many of y'all know he wouldn't be a good devil if he didn't? Now, what makes him good is that he's been doing it a long time, and I think he doesn't have anything better to do than to try to get us to, to, to mess up and screw up and hurt the heart of God. So for he, after that temptation, though, Jesus really began his earthly ministry, and in three short years, he was on the cross. It was all over. He was totally, he was gone. But how many of y'all know his ministry is still viral all across the globe right now while I'm standing, and the sun has already set on the church across the globe, but thousands and thousands and millions of people come into will hear the gospel of Jesus Christ today and will make a decision to follow him how many of y'all know he's the same yesterday today and forever 
So his viralness didn't end the day he died on the cross. Really, he was just getting started. And he's still moving. He's still working. And the rapid transfer of information is still spreading about him. He's still in the healing power. still in delivering power. He's still translating people out of darkness into marvelous light. He's still preaching and teaching. How many of y'all glad his reign never ends? He just keeps going and going. So we've been looking at, well, why was he so attractive? I mean, in three years, and I showed you multitudes and multitudes and multitudes, they thronged him, they followed him. I mean, he would cross an ocean and they would be waiting for him. He would come back the other side and they're waiting for him. Just people gravitated him, young, old, it didn't matter, everything. So we've taken a few couple of weeks to look at some of the reasons why. One of the reasons he brought new words, new vocabulary, new thought patterns. Last week I saw you, he was not just a a lamb he was a lion as kind as he was on week one we saw last week he could eviscerate he was very unkind to people that he saw as threats to his sheep he says listen I will whip the wolves if there's something that gets in the sheep fold so he was a lamb but he was a lion I want to show you this week that really one of the reasons that people that people went to him was not because of his leadership but because of his feedership. He was a prolific feeder. And whenever I say feeder, I just mean uh, he fed people or he taught people. Where would you be if you didn't uh, have the knowledge of Jesus Christ? Where would you be? Somebody taught you. Somebody told you. Somebody brought you the message of forgiveness. Somebody brought you a message of healing. Somebody brought you a message of faith. Somebody brought you the word of God. And the number one thing that Jesus did was not just make the lame walk or the blind see. That's an obvious answer. People gravitated towards this. But he taught people. He, he answered people's why. All of us walk through life with all different whys. Why did they leave? Why did this happen? Why is this not happening? And and Jesus answered people's why. And what was beautiful and amazing and what he's still doing even today while I'm talking, every sheep in here and every watching, everyone watching online, you all have different needs. Some of you need deliverance. Some of you need healing. Some of you need information. Some of you need wisdom. Whatever you need, and yet he can meet every one of those at the same time time. That's why I have somebody come up to me after service and say, how did you know that I needed that? You know, I've had people tell me, are you reading my emails? And it's like, no, baby, I'm not reading your emails. Like, I don't even, what's your name again? Like, I don't even, you know what I mean? It's like, no, I'm not, I'm not reading your mail. He is. He knows what's in your inbox. He knows what's going on in your head. And he can feed every sheep that needs every different thing. That's why you've opened up your Bible and it fell open to a book you couldn't even pronounce, right? Obadiah, Obadiah. And there'll be a verse there that will feed your soul. And you're like, how did he know? I just opened the Bible up there. It's because he's a feeder. He's a feeder. He's not just a leader. He is a feeder. And he prolifically, he taught everywhere he went. He was teaching. He was teaching. He was teaching. How many of y'all know teaching? How many of y'all know knowledge is power? In in China, me and Elizabeth have been to China. If you go over there, uh, the government owns all of the radio stations. The government owns all of the television. It's a communist country. So they control the narrative. The people of China only know what the government tells them. They have no idea what's happening in America. They have no idea what's happening anywhere. There is no internet. The government controls all the information. So the people are bound or they're just up under that communist regime. And, and, but, but, how many of y'all know whenever you get the right knowledge, baby, then, then a whole world opens up to you? How many of y'all remember uh, passing your driving test? Hey, man. How many of y'all remember studying that little, like, can't turn into oncoming traffic and all that type of stuff? Turn your blinker on, you can't pass. I do this all the time. You're not supposed to. You can't pass under like a red light. It's like, well, they're all still stuck. So I'm going around, right? So, but you learn all of that type of stuff. You know, I have a 15-year-old that she told me just a couple days. She goes, you know what today is? It's October 2nd. 30 days, I get my license. 
Her birthday's November 2nd, right? She's counting down, right? She's counting down. It's freedom day for her, baby. She, she's marking the X's on the calendar. That's the day I pass that test. I get those keys, and I'm going to free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, I'm free at last. How many of y'all remember? Y'all remember? You get the knowledge, and they give you, take your ugly little picture with your braces and all that stuff, your ugly little license picture. But now you've got the knowledge of how to drive, right? And for me, I drove stick. I mean, y'all drive stick. Stick. Anybody? John, you still drive stick? Some of y'all still drive a stick? Anybody else? Anybody? Some of y'all still drive a, a standard? All right, man. Pop that clutch, right? Learning to drive in the mall parking lot. How many of y'all did that, right? Out there? Yeah, I did it, did it, did it. But how many of y'all know once you get that knowledge, you get that, then you have that freedom, right? And that freedom, the whole world opens up to you. When Jesus taught, man, he gave them freedom. He gave them comfort, he gave them power. And at that time, the only people that really had the knowledge was the people that the Sadducees, the Pharisees, and all that. Jesus came and he fed and he fed and he fed. And I'll show this to you because this was so attractive to people because knowledge is powerful. I mean, I know knowledge is comforting when you know. If you don't know, it's hard to settle. It's hard to be at settle. It's hard to be in rest whenever you have questions going on or just twirling over in your brain. I've done many funerals. Some, I don't like doing funerals. I, I, don't, I don't like them. I don't care if they, even if they did go to heaven or whatever, I still, it's not fun, right? Because you're looking at a family there that's, that they're in mourning, right? A, a mom or a, a sibling or people are there crying, but it's, it's more troublesome, trust me, if you're not sure where they are. Now, if you have the knowledge that they're born again, that, they're, that they've made Jesus the Lord of their life, that they have eternal life, and that they're in heaven. How many of y'all know that's a lot? That knowing is very comforting. That not knowing is very disturbing. That not knowing keep you up at night. It keeps the wheels turning in your head, that uncertainty. So knowledge is comforting, and knowledge is powerful. Knowledge is freeing. And what I want you to see, one of the reasons Jesus went so viral is not just because of the lame walk and the blind see. It's because he taught, he gave them why. He gave them how. This is how the kingdom of God works. This is how God thinks. This is how faith works. This is how the door to the supernatural opens. This is how. This is why. This is what God is thrilled with. This is what God is disgusted with. This is what. The, and that information, man, now you can move. Now you can, you can go forward. Now you can grow. Now you're not stuck because knowledge is power. And every one of you in here, the day you found out about forgiveness it it brought you something when you found out about peace it delivered something to you when you found out about hope whatever you found out about in Jesus Christ it delivered a package to you that nobody else could give you and it's powerful and it's comforting and it's freeing and what I want you to see here is number one Jesus is the same yesterday today and forever how many of y'all know he's still feeding sheep He's still feeding sheep. The last thing he told Peter, if you under, remember this, he's died on the cross, he arose, all that type of stuff. Peter's all upset because he denied Jesus three times and he thinks my life's over. You know, how am I ever going to do this? I've got to go to preacher rehab. Like I just, there's no way I can ever recover from this. And Jesus cooks him breakfast, tells him to throw his net on the other side, brings all these fish in just like he did the first time. And he realizes, man, that's the Lord right there. He shows up, Jesus is cooking him breakfast on on the beach and the last thing he says he says Peter do you love me and of course Peter said you know I love you of course I love you and he said feed my sheep then he asked him again he said Peter do you love me Lord you know I love you of course I love you I'm, asked, I'm beating myself up because I denied you three times of course I love you he says feed my sheep ask him a third time do you love me of course I love you feed my lambs the last instruction said Peter the upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against the church it's all built upon the teaching the teaching you're free because of the teaching you're not free because of a miracle. You're free because of the teaching. You're not in bondage because of the teaching. Jesus is a feeder. The church is a feeder. We put a high priority on the word of God here. We put a high priority. I study a lot to teach 
the word of God. We all love the miraculous, but Jesus didn't just show up with temporary fixes to temporary problems like blindness. No, no, no. He wants you to be, he whom the son has set free is free indeed. He wants you to be free. He wants your kids to be free, your grandkids to be free. He wants you to carry freedom, deliver freedom. He wants the chains to fall off. It comes through the teaching and the teaching and the teaching of the word. And I'll show you this, and this is in Luke chapter 22, verse number 37. It says, every day, everybody say every day. I just read you a verse that says that the world is peripheral to the church, not the church is peripheral to the world. God's presence was the center of Jesus' life. Every day he was at the temple. Every stinking day. He prioritized God's presence and God's word. And he's the son of God. How many of y'all know If he needs it, we need it times two. We really needed it if he needed it. Every day he was in the temple. What was he doing? Teaching. Each evening he returned to spend the night at the Mount of Olives. The crowds gathered. Here they come. Multitudes gathered to see healing Miracles, signs, wonders, water into wine, walk on water. No, no, no. They gathered at the temple early each morning just to hear him. Why? He had the words of life. He was the bread from heaven. So much so, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they all start their gospel. Woman, betrothed. Impregnated by the Holy Spirit, baby born, Bethlehem, angels sing, shepherds rejoice, all that. John started his, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word became flesh. What John saw about Jesus was he was the Word of God in a human body. He came and dwelt among us. And then the next verse, verse number two, put it up there, John chapter one, verse two, in Jesus' name. He was in the beginning with God, next verse. All things were made through him, without him, nothing that was made. Nothing was made that was made. Everything was made by the word. Everything revolves around the word. He is the word. So John just defines Jesus as the word in a body form. That's what John thought of his teaching. Now, I'm going to go through these really quick. Mark chapter 1, verse number 22. It says, they were astonished, not at his miracles, at his doctrine. He taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Mark chapter 2, he went forth again on the seaside. Great multitudes resorted unto him, and he taught them. Mark chapter 4, he taught them. Mark chapter 9, he taught them. Mark chapter 10, he arose from thence, cometh to the coast of Judea, the further side of the Jordan. The people, they came to him again, and as he went, he taught them again. How many of y'all know you need it more than once? You say, I heard that message before. Trust me, you're going to need it more than once. Sinner. (laughs) Not the time you think you got it whipped. Tell me I know you ain't got it whipped. Yeah, let's keep going now. Mark chapter 11, he taught them. Mark chapter 12, Jesus answered unto them while he taught them in the temple. Y'all get the picture? Come on, Jesus' ministry was not a ministry of just miracles. It was a ministry of teaching. He he multiplied loaves and fishes. That was after the Bible says they followed him for three days and three nights. They didn't eat. Whatever they had, they packed a sack of lunch, whatever. He taught them a full day. He taught them a second day. He taught them a third day. You think I preach long, follow Jesus. Lord, have mercy. After the third day, the disciples came to Jesus and said, Master, these people have been following you for three days, listening to you teach. They're hungry. We need to send them away. In other words, the disciples were like, we even feel like this meeting's gotten long. (laughs) 
Lord Jesus, land the plane, baby. We got to get to Cracker Barrel. Like, let's move it along. And then Jesus, Jesus was not satisfied with that. He says, what do you have? Oh, we got, you know, a few loaves, a few fishes. Sit them down in groups of 50. Dear God, this meeting is never going to end. When are we going to get home? But the point is, Jesus knew they didn't need a fish sandwich. They needed the teaching. They didn't just need a fish sandwich. They needed to know how to catch fish. You teach a man to catch fish, he'll never be in need of fish because he knows where the getting place is. He taught them. He taught them. He taught them. Where would you be without the teaching? Where would you be without the message of Jesus? Where would, where would I be? What, where would we be? We would be lost. We need that. So I want to show you this, and I'm going to look at uh, uh, the 23rd Psalm is where I'm going to spend the rest of the time because the 23rd Psalm is not just a famous psalm to us. And whenever I say to us, it's the most famous psalm right? The Lord is my... Yeah. See, even people that don't, maybe don't know God, don't like God, or they still have heard the 23rd Psalm. They've been to enough funerals to have heard the 23rd Psalm. Just like John 3, 16, for God so loved the... Thank you. Y'all not so bad after all. Listen to y'all. For God so loved the world, right? So, so that John 3, 16, everybody knows that, everybody knows that. There's 150 Psalms. Now, if I ask you what Psalms 37, the first line of Psalms 37, you would be lost. You don't have any idea. If you do, I resign. You can take it. Uh, I don't even know what the first the line of Psalm 37 is or Psalm 89. There's 150 Psalms. You know, there's about five of them that I'm very familiar with that I like and I love and all that 150, 34, all that type of stuff. Psalms 91, he that dwells in the secret place of the most high. How I many y'all know that one? Y'all like that one? So there's different ones that we really like. There's 150 of them. The Jewish people back then, the same way, there were certain Psalms they heard all the time. Every Monday, they would read the same Psalm. Every Tuesday, they would read the same psalm. Every Wednesday, they would read the same. There were certain readings that they had each day of the week. If you grew up as a Jewish boy or a Jewish girl, there was all, you always at the temple, you're always there. Everything revolved around the temple. You heard certain psalms all the time. Psalms 23, Psalms 24 was one of them. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. One of the reasons why I'm going to show you why Jesus went so viral is in John chapter 10, Jesus shows up one day and he makes this statement. John chapter 10, verse number 10, it says, The thief's purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. But my purpose is to give a rich and satisfying life. I am the what? I am the good shepherd. Now, immediately, their brains start popping off a little bit, and they start thinking, wait, 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 what's this guy saying here? Because Jesus is standing up here, and immediately they start thinking, Psalms 23, he says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd sacrifices his life for the sheep. A hired hand will run, and if he sees a wolf coming, he'll abandon the sheep because they don't belong to him, and he isn't their shepherd. So the wolf attacks and scatters the flock, and the hired hand runs away because he's working only for money, and he doesn't really care about the sheep. But I am the good shepherd and I know my own sheep, and they know me. And just as my Father knows me, and I know the Father, I sacrifice my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep too, and they're not in the sheepfold, but I must bring them also. They will listen to my voice, and there will be one flock with one shepherd. The Father loves me because I sacrifice my life so I may take it back again. No one takes my life from me. I sacrifice it voluntarily. I have the authority to lay it down when I want to and to take it up again. This is what my Father has commanded. And what I want you to see is when Jesus stood up and he said, I am the good shepherd, he's immediately starting to say, that psalm you've been reading about ever since you were a little boy, I am that shepherd. That thing you've been quoting, I am that shepherd, and God has sent me here. The Father sent me here. So much so, a couple of verses later, this is verse 24, the people surrounded him, and they asked, how long are you going to keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, 
tell us plainly. They recognize immediately Jesus is calling him the good shepherd of Psalms chapter 23. Now, I want to show you Psalms 23 is where we're going to spend the rest of the time, and then I'll let you go uh, eat your lunch. But I want you to see that Psalms 23 shows what a good shepherd is, and it's a picture of Jesus. So whenever you read Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd, there's certain things I want you to see that points to the, the, the ministry of Jesus. And I want you to know every day you need the presence of God in your life. Every day you need the word of God in your life. If you remember in the Old Testament, in the Old Testament they were hungry. How many of y'all hungry? How many of y'all hungry right now? It's okay. You don't have to, don't have to lie. No, I'm good. How many of y'all ready? Y'all ready for whatever it is, what y'all having? My mother cooked today. I'm pretty excited about that. She don't always cook, but when she does, it's always good. So let me pause right now and ponder these things, right? I went over to her house last night. She was making German chocolate cake. That's what I said. That's what I said. I said the same thing. Let me just take a praise break real quick. <laughs> take, take, take a praise break. <laughs> In the Old Testament, they just like you. They got hungry, so they cried out to God. They said, God, uh, we're hungry. We're in the wilderness. We need some food. And most of you know the story. God said, I'm going to rain down bread from heaven. And the Bible says it's like a sweet type of bread, like a Hawaiian roll. How many of y'all like a Hawaiian roll? How many of y'all know it's better than a wheat roll? We don't want none of that wheat. Give me that Hawaiian roll. Give me that sourdough roll. So uh, he says, every day I'm going to rain bread down from heaven. He says, you're going to go out, gather what you need for that day, eat that bread, and it'll satisfy you. He said, the only caveat is, is you can't gather up enough for two days or three days or five days, you have to go out every day and get the bread. If you go out and you try to get up enough bread to last you a few days, he said, it'll get maggots. And it will rot and it'll make, it, it's, it's not going to work for you. And what's the point? The point is, is that every day we need to be getting bread from God. Lots of times we try to get enough on Sunday to last us all week. But by Monday, you're fresh out. By Monday, by Tuesday, you're starving. By Wednesday, you're about dead. And you come rolling into church on Sunday, crawling in, right? Because you're trying to live a week's worth on one day. Jesus was teaching every day. Why? Because just like in the Old Testament and the New Testament, every day you need the Word of God. You need to gather and that bread. He is the bread of life that will sustain you. So when he stood up and said, listen, I am the good shepherd, he's pointing to Psalms 23. If you look at Psalms 23, and you shouldn't even have to look up on the screens because all of you haven't memorized, you've already told me that. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not Want. Now, as a kid, I'll just tell you, I was probably 20 before I figured that verse out because I couldn't understand why you didn't want him. I couldn't figure it out. I was like, why don't you want him? And then I learned it means I, I do not lack. Because the Lord's my shepherd, I do not lack. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down where? In green pastures. Now, what does a sheep do in a pasture? Eat. That's all they do. They eat and they eat and they eat. The number one thing that Jesus does for you and I is he feeds us. The number one need that we have from Jesus, our shepherd, is to feed us. The number one need that you need in your life from Jesus is his feeding. It's his teaching. That's, that's what he brings us. That's what we need. We need those green pastures where we eat from him. We dine from him. We learn from him. We get comfort from that knowledge. We get power from that knowledge. We get freedom from that knowledge. Without that feeding, we're bound. We have no comfort. We're not happy. We're not growing. We need that feeding from our good shepherd. And he says, I'll bring you to the green pastures and you eat and you eat and you eat because every person in here, after you eat your lunch, what are you going to do? Lay down. Why? Because you're full. You are satisfied. You're comfortable. Now, if you're an overachiever, you may eat... You're abnormal. 
You may go cut the grass, but if you're normal on Sunday, baby, you eat your food and then it's time to what? put the feet up, put the game on, put golf on. It's really nice to nap to, right? And it's soft voice and it's like, it's just the best thing in the whole wide world. You put golf on the little green little picture right there and then you wake up and you got spit all over the sofa about two hours later. Why? Because you're full. You're satisfied. You've been eaten. You are fed. The green pasture has filled your little sheep belly and now it's time to lay down. The number one thing Jesus does for you is he teaches you. Where would you be without the message of forgiveness? Where would you be without the message of peace, without hope, without redemption, without eternal life? Okay, so what does he teach us? And he tells us right here, what's the next part of the verse? He leads us to green pastures. He brings us to what? Still waters. What is still waters? If you remember Jesus, and I, Jesus told that woman, he says, The woman at the well is drawing water up out of that well. And Jesus asks her for a what? He says, hey, give me a drink. And, and she doesn't want to give him a drink. But he says, listen, lady, if you knew who was asking you for a drink, you would give me a drink. Because he says, I have water that you know not of. And if you'll drink from me, you will never thirst again. I've got water that will satisfy. The number one thing Jesus has taught all of us is there's nothing that satisfies besides him. Nothing. You can try everything you can try. You can smoke everything you can smoke. You can, you can gain everything you can gain. I don't care how much money you get. Everybody has a God-shaped hole that only he can fill. He's the, and I'm telling you, the, you found this to be true. You came to Jesus, and the first thing he taught you in that green pasture is, I'm the only thing that satisfies. Every 31 seconds, somebody tries to kill themselves. And in prosperous, prosperous nations are the number one group of people that try to commit suicide. Why? Because we chase the carrot, we chase the carrot, we chase the carrot. The problem is, is when we finally get the carrot, we find out it's not enough. And once you find out it's not enough, you are not satisfied. Well, there's nothing else to live for, baby. I got the carrot. And if I got the carrot and I'm still unsatisfied, what's left for me? Jesus Christ showed up and he says, I'm the only thing that's satisfied. He stood up on the great day of the feast and he said, if any man thirsts, let him come unto me and drink. And out of his belly will flow rivers of living water. And I don't know where you were when you got that first message. I don't know where you were when you took that first drink. But the first thing that you tasted of from, the, from Jesus Christ was, I can satisfy I'm the only one with eternal life. I'm the only one with the gates to heaven. I'm the only one that can redeem. I'm the only one that can forgive you. I can, I'm the only one that can remove your sins as far as the east is from. The, I'm the only one. And at some point you said, baby, I need that water. Give me a drink of that. Like that's the only thing. I've tried everything else. And all of you know, all of you have seen this. If you watch Tom Brady on 60 Minutes, you know, they ask him, they said, man, you got a supermodel. You got five or six rings, blah, blah, blah. And he says out of his own mouth, he says, I feel like there's more. I feel like I'm missing something. I, feel, I, I have everything. I got Giselle. Not anymore. This is a, a couple years ago. He, he let Giselle go or maybe she let him go anyway. But he said, man, I got all this. I feel like there's more. Why? Because there is. You'll leave everything else here. He's the only thing that satisfies. First thing Jesus teaches you. What's the next part of the verse? He leads us to still waters. And then what's the next part after that? Y'all all know. He restores my soul. He restores my soul. If you study psychology, which I don't, uh, <laughs> but there's seven major emotions in the human psychology. And I actually thought this was interesting. I actually was going to give them uh, a picture. Did I give you all the picture of it? Yeah, put it up there. It's funny. The seven universal facial expressions of emotion. These are the main seven emotions that any human has. Happiness, surprise, contempt, sadness, fear, disgust, anger. 
Multitudes followed Jesus. When he looked out, that's what he saw. Every Sunday of my life, I look out, I see all seven. That one's ticked, that one's happy, that one's mad, that one's disgusted, right? I see every seven, every Sunday of my entire existence, right? Jesus Christ, multitudes showed up and they wanted to know why. They wanted to know how. They were disgusted. They were sad. They were happy. They wanted answers. When the Bible says he restores your soul, your soul is your emotions. Your soul is why? Your soul is your mental, your intellect, your thoughts. How many of y'all know there is no health without mental health? It doesn't matter how healthy you are in your body if your mind's not right. If your mind's not right. How many of y'all know it don't matter how big your muscles are if you don't have peace? If you don't have peace, you'll pull your hair out. If you don't have peace, you don't have rest. So when Jesus showed up, the first thing he says is, number one, I'm the only thing that satisfies. Number two is, I'm the only thing that'll bring rest. I'm the only thing that'll answer your why. I'm the only thing that can show you or give you soul therapy. I'm the only thing that can restore your soul. And that's why all of you, how many of y'all, many of y'all have all seven? Some of y'all, how many of y'all, listen, it's so funny, but it ain't funny. But if you've ever been married, how many of y'all know you're married, you married, or even your kids? Like, my, my, my kids will go through all seven in about 10 minutes. My, my seven will run the gamut. Like, it's like all, they just go from mad to happy to confused to disgusted, all, in, all within like a 10-minute period. Like, you can just go through, run the gamut to them. Listen, whenever, whenever all these multitudes show up to Jesus Christ, they all came with questions, concerns. They needed help. They didn't know. They, they, and, and because of the, that soul problem, there's no rest. There's no peace. I mean, I know one of the last things Jesus said. He says, hey, I'm going to leave you my peace. And he says, it's a peace that passes all understanding. That in the middle of a storm, you can have peace. In the middle of calamity, you can have peace. And your peace can be a compass for you. He says, I'm going to leave you a compass. You show up on the college campus, you're like, man, I don't have peace about going to school here. Well, Jesus gave you that peace so that you'll make the right choices. I don't have peace about hanging out with them. I don't have peace about marrying them. I don't have peace about that. What's he doing, baby? He's restoring your soul. He's keeping you in, the, in that, that place of peace. He gave us that compass. Last thing is, well, there's two more, but I got to hurry. What time? I know you all ready to go eat. Thank you. Who said take your time? Thank you, D. So sweet back there. Take, take your time. I'll, I'll just add it 30 minutes. Cause <laughs> Y'all don't give her the stink eye, but it's like, <laughs> keep your mouth shut. Green pastures, still waters. He restores your soul. Last one that I'll get to. I'd really like to go through the whole psalm, but I'm not going to go through the whole psalm. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of what? Righteousness. Number one bestseller on the planet outside of the Bible. Anybody want to know what it is? Purpose Driven Life. Number one bestseller of all time outside of the Bible. Purpose Driven Life. Why? Jesus knew people wanted purpose. People wanted to know what they're supposed to be doing. And he shows up, he says, I've got the path. I know the path. For you to take. How many of y'all know Jesus knows the path to peace? Yeah. How many of y'all know Jesus knows the path to healing? Jesus knows the path to deliverance. People get bound, people get addicted, certain things. Jesus has the path to freedom. Jesus has the path to eternal life. He says, Wide is the path that leads to destruction. Narrow is the path that leads 
to eternal life and few find it. So whatever path, all of us show, in, show up with a range of emotions in our soul. He says, I can minister to every one of them at the same time. All of us show up with different paths ahead of us. Do I pick that girl? Do I go this path? How do I get here? What do I do here? I need financial help. I need whatever path. How many of y'all Jesus has ever showed you the path? Jesus shows up, he says, this is the way, walk ye in it. My word is a lamp unto your feet, a light unto your path. He's a path shower. And how many of y'all so, I don't know about you, but there's been times in my life where I didn't know what to do. How many of y'all have ever been there and said, I don't know what to do here. But how many of y'all know through, just through the feeding of Jesus, you get in a meeting, you open up your Bible, you're just your regular Devo, and all of a sudden, the path is clear. All of a sudden, he showed you like, this is the way, walk you in it. This, this, this is the direction that you need to go with your life. How many of y'all know this is not just good for you, it's good for your kids? Because here, this is the last part that I want all of you to get. Jesus stood up. He said, man, I'm the shepherd, and I'm going to start feeding. I'm going to feed. And he fed, and he taught, and he taught, and he taught, and he taught, and he taught. What was he teaching? Number one, I'm the only one that can satisfy. Number two, all of your problems, your mental health, your anxiety, your worry, your depression, your not knowing, your uncertainty, I can fix all of it. I know how to, I can fix all of it. Number three, you don't know the direction. You don't know the path that you're supposed to be on. You don't know your purpose you don't know all that he says baby I can I've got the path laid out for you and he gives you that word and he teaches you and he keeps you on that path he does all of that well listen what's the response for us as the church how many y'all know we're the church so our job is in order to keep Jesus viral is to teach and you, every one of you, you go to school with people you go to work with people you're around people and they're totally ignorant and you got the words of life. You have, you have the path of Jesus in you. So what my encouragement is, is listen, we're not just looking about how Jesus went viral and he changed the world in three years. No, no, no. He's still changing the world and he does it through the church. So it's our job to help people, to teach people. Where does it start? Everybody say at home. My job as a parent is to start at home. At home, I teach my kids, this is the path, this is the direction, this is the way, walk ye in it. This is, this is, this is, this is what we need to be doing, this is why. How many of y'all know that, it, that for you and I as Christians, we're, our job is not to tell people what they're not supposed to be doing. No, 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 our job is to give people the why. Our job is to give people the how. Jesus didn't just show up and for three years shake his finger at people and say, this is what you're not supposed to be doing. No, no, no. He showed up with the why. He showed up with the how. You want to help people? Just tell them, tell them what you know. I love, like my wife, she says, listen, you don't have to tell everybody the whole Bible. You don't have to have 10 verses memorized. Just tell them what you know. Just tell him what he did for you. Just tell him what you experienced. If you'll just tell him what you experienced and what you know, just that teaching gives people freedom, gives people comfort, gives people strength, gives people help, gives people power, power and knowledge. Just that teaching from you, just from you. A 12-year-old, a 15-year-old, a 19-year-old, There's no. it doesn't matter how old you are, it doesn't matter. The Word of God is good and true for everybody. People throng, people are wanting, people are grasping for answers. They're, one, they're grasping for the why. They're looking, they're thronging, searching so much for the why. The church has the answer. Jesus has the green pastures. We are Jesus. Jesus has the still waters. We are the leaders to the still waters. Jesus has the path that's plain, that's simple, that, 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 that's foundational. How many of y'all, we have that path, that we're the carrier of that path. It's our job to distribute and to keep teaching. And listen, the teaching we, hear, we do here at the church, whether it's grow class or whether it's Bible college, whether it's small groups, all that's good, but it's really to empower us to go outside of the walls of the church and say, baby, I don't know everything, but I know this. I once was blind. And now I see. 
and all these people ask all these complicated questions. He's like, baby, I can't answer all your complicated questions because I'm not that complicated. But I can tell you I once was blind and now I see. That's the, Listen, you're not telling what you don't know. Just tell them what you do know. And just that teaching helps people tremendously. And if you don't even know how to do that, just get them into the house. You get them here, I guarantee you, God will read their mail, and he will make the path plain. He will restore their soul, and he will feed his sheep, because that's what he does. So if nothing else works, get him to the house. If nothing else works, get him in the room. I mean, I know just during worship, they're just like, well, my God, my soul needed this. I came in with all seven in the parking lot, and it's so good now. He done restored my soul through two songs and one reading, like, let's all go to the house come on just being in the presence of Jesus he checked every box and we didn't even get to he makes a table before me in the presence of my enemies he anoints my head with oil and my cup runs over surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I dwell in the house of the Lord forever we didn't even get to the we didn't even get to the rest of the psalm I mean we got to the first three parts I mean we didn't even make it I mean we barely made it down the hill I mean we're still up there in the pastures and the waters and the paths I mean we didn't even get down to the valley yet through the valley of the shadow of death I fear no evil thou art with me I mean we didn't even, we didn't even get to any of that I mean so when Jesus stood up and said I'm the good shepherd I mean baby they knew exactly what he was talking about because they've been reading it since they was a kid they said, keep us out of suspense. Are you the Messiah? Because you are obviously carrying something nobody else has. He says, yeah, I'm the good shepherd. I'm a good shepherd. You don't have purpose, I'll lead you there. You're in anguish, I'll show you a way out. You're unsatisfied, come unto me and drink. I got waters. You'll never thirst again. At least the woman was smart enough to say, give me some of that water. That's exactly what she said. She said, baby, give me some of that water. He says, first go get your husband. I don't have a husband. I know. Boy, and then he just starts restoring that soul. It's like, I don't have a husband. I know you got five. And the one you're living with now is not him. Surely you are a prophet. Boy, what's he doing? He's just unwinding all of that anguish, all of that uncertainty, all that stuff, you being a Jew, me being a Samaritan, you being a male, me being a female, I'm not worthy, I'm not this, I'm not that. Right there in that moment, the good shepherd is doing all the stuff that he said he would do. One right after another, bam, 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 bam. How many of y'all know he's still doing it today? He'll be doing it five years from now. And our job is to just be the good shepherd with him. Say, I know my Redeemer lives. I can get you. The Lord will help you. The Lord will show you. So, I mean, we are building a building because there's people that multitudes are coming. Multitudes are coming just because I'm telling you, Jesus Christ same yesterday, today, and forever. And he is not satisfied with his sheep, not knowing, not hearing. He is not satisfied with that. He is not, he will not quit. He will do whatever it takes to reach his sheep. So we are getting, we're getting ready. The world needs it. I'm telling you, the world needs it. All right, let, me, uh, let me pray for you. Let me bless you before you go. God, we thank you for, to be at your house God, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Where would we be without the word that came to us? Where would we be without your teaching, without the knowledge of God? Lord Jesus, you showed up and you said, this is how the kingdom works. This is how God works. This is the path to heaven. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jesus. You're still teaching. That you're still feeding your sheep. You're not just a leader. You're a feeder. Everywhere you went, you're teaching, teaching, teaching. 
God, we thank you that we yield ourselves, that we come under your leadership, your feedership, your lordship, that we come under that teaching. You said, whoever hears my word and does them, whoever hears my word and does them, God, that we're not here just to be a hearer, but God, we're here to be a doer. That we don't just hear your word, but we want to do your word. And you said that's the path to eternal life. That's the path to righteousness. That's the path to healing. Hearing's not enough. It's the doing. Lord Jesus, we ask you to show us, Holy Spirit, your job is to show us what we can do to get on that path. Come on, right where you're sitting. If you'll you'll ask the Holy Spirit, you say, hey, Holy Spirit, I need, show me what I need to do to get on that path. That's his job. That's what the Holy Spirit's job is. Jesus is the path. He shows you what to do on how to, how to get there, how to get there. God, I thank you. I thank you. Every person watching online, God, I recognize there's people a year from now stumble upon this message, but they didn't stumble upon it. You put it in their path. You put it in their path. God, you say, this is the way. Walk ye in it. This is the path to healing. This is the path to deliverance. This is the path to eternal life. God, we thank you. We thank you. God, we thank you for your patience that you teach us again and again and again. Then we we don't listen. We don't obey. You just keep bringing it back to us again and again and again that you want us so much to have a restored soul, to know the path to take. You want us to lie down and be satisfied. God, that's what you want for us as the sheep of your pasture. God, we thank you that you just bring it to us again and again and again. If you're here and you need prayer today for anything, doesn't matter what it is. If you're here and you feel like, man, I don't know the path. If you're here and you feel like your soul is unrestored, unrenewed, whatever it is, doesn't matter. If you need prayer for anything, I'd love to pray with you and pray for you. I'm not going to embarrass you, but just want to give you an opportunity to respond to the word of God. You just say, man, I feel like the Lord, uh, I need prayer today. Whatever it is, if that's you and you're here I'm going to ask you to raise your hand right where you are. It doesn't matter who you are. Some of it, under, I, I recognize, since just watching online, people online, yes, sir. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Just say, hey, man, I'm not quite sure. I see that hand. Lots of y'all say, hey, just whether it's the path, whether it's the soul, it doesn't matter. Uh, Jesus is still in that business, has always been in that business, and always will be in that business. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Sometimes it's, you know, it's a relationship. It's just like, man, I just don't quite know what to do here. He shows. He does. I guarantee you, he shows. Sometimes we, it, it takes longer than we, than we want to. I will say that. There's times whenever I've asked the Lord, it's like, why did they leave? Why did it not work out? Why did this not come through? And we want that answer now, but a year will go by or two years will go by and the Lord will just show me, say, this is why it didn't work out. This is why they left. This is why it didn't come through. This is why. God always will give you the why just may not come when you want it but he's a good shepherd he doesn't want your soul distressed or distraught no no no. he'll give it to you just be patient say God I'm believing that you'll reveal to me the why he'll restore your soul everybody stand up on your feet I'm going to pray together with you a bunch of y'all raise your hand I'm not going to call you down here God is faithful you want to say anything are you good Everybody say, Lord Jesus, you are the Lord of all. You are my leader, my feeder, my teacher. Show me plain paths.
still waters, green pastures. I thank you. You are the good shepherd. You lay your life down for me. I believe, I confess that you came, you live, you died, you conquered death, and you arose. No man takes your life. You lay it down. You took it up again. I believe the Lordship of Jesus Christ redeems me, saves me, teaches me, leads me in all things. In Jesus' name. We bless you before you go. God, we thank you we'd leave blessed to have been at your house, to dine at your table. Lord Jesus, you are the bread of life. Every day, we need your word, your manna from heaven. God, that we love you. We leave blessed to have been at your house. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. Hey, if you need prayer for anything else, we have prayer counselors down here at the front. It's going to be a great week. God bless you. You are dismissed.